Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Tirso and I'm an art director based in New York City. And in today's video, we're talking about some InDesign basics. I want to caveat that I'm not going to be going over all of the InDesign features, but you don't really need to know all of them to execute the projects that you're going to be working on. As David Carson says, we want your mind, not your technology. I always find that working on an actual project is the best way to learn a program. So for today, we are going to be working on a magazine page. I've linked the project files below if you want to follow along. First, you're going to need InDesign and any version will do. If you don't have it, there is a link to a seven day trial below. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos. When you first open up InDesign, this is the screen that you'll see. You can create a new document over here on the left. For the most part, InDesign should be strictly used for print. So let's click print in the top left. The default is letter, which most of you will be working with anyway, so let's just leave that. On the right side here, I just want you to change picas to inches since a majority of us are more familiar with inches. These facing pages, you can toggle it on and off depending if you want your pages to be a spread like a magazine or if you want them as individual pages. For now, let's click create. Before starting design, I always like to set my grid first. We can do that underneath the layout dropdown here in margins and columns. For this layout, I'm going to use seven columns, which we can enter here and click OK. Let's add some text. You can click the T in the toolbar over here, or you can just press the letter T as a shortcut. And to add a text box, we just click and drag. You can type in here as you want, or you can copy and paste from another document as well. For now, I'm just gonna call this Beginner's Guide to InDesign. And then click off. This is your um, selection tool here. Anytime you wanna click off an element, this is your go-to. And the shortcut for that is letter V. So let's change the typeface here. We can do that in the character panel, which you'll find in Window, Types and Tables, and Character. The shortcut for this is Command-T. And I'm just going to dock this on the right side. The first drop down here is for the typeface, which I'm going to use Rubik. And I'm going to use Rubik Bold. The bottom here is where you can go between font weights. The first option here is your point size. For this, I'm going to use 35 points. And then for the letting, let's go with 40. And press enter. We don't like a widow, so I'm just gonna soft return that down, which is just shift return. And then there's a lot of space underneath here. You can close your text boxes by hitting command option C. Using the selection tool, shortcut B, I'm gonna move this a little bit higher. Maybe that high? Sure, why not? We need to add some body copy to this, so let's go back to the type tool and draw another text box. I don't have copy for this, so there is actually a tool in InDesign where you can add Greek copy, which you'll find under type, and just hit fill with placeholder text. So again, I'm gonna go back to the character panel. I'm gonna type here Rubik. Instead of bold, I'm gonna go with Rubik regular. And then for the point size, I'm working with nine point font over 10 and a half for the letting. Um, I want this to be one paragraph, so I'm gonna bring that up. Let's zoom in here real quick. Hold down the letter Z and drag to the area that you wanna zoom into. I just wanna remove this hyphen here. Let's click the text box first, and we can do this by opening up our paragraph panel. Under Window, Types and Tables, click Paragraph. The shortcut for this is Command Option T. I'm just gonna dock this to the right here. And then once you open that up, you'll see an option at the bottom called Hyphenate, and the hyphenate will move. To zoom back out, we can hit Command-0, which zooms the page to fit our screen. Let's look at some of the features in the paragraph panel. Currently, the text box is left aligned. You can use this for center aligned or right aligned, but for now, let's just keep it left aligned. 
A common thing you see in magazines is the use of a drop cap. You can do that by the bottom field here. Let's go up to four. And you can see that the L got bigger. Let's zoom into that drop cap, hold down Z and then drag. This space is really tight, so I want to move this entire text over by turning this first line to the right. We do that by holding Option and then just using the arrow key over. And then let's zoom back out to full page. I want to close this text box by holding Command Option C. And let's just move that down. Now let's add an image. I recommend that you always gather your assets so you have them in one place. I have them in this folder links here. To add the image, you can click and drag onto your InDesign and then click into InDesign and you should see the thumbnail. To place it in the document, just click and drag. And I'm gonna go that far. Let's go over a couple things that you can do with images. You probably want to know how to crop, which you can just click and then drag from any corner or any edge. And you'll see that the image stays in place. I'm going to Command Z that, which is undo. We can also scale the image larger, so we can drag from the corner or an edge. And if you hold Command and Shift, it'll maintain the proportion. You can also flip the image horizontally or vertically. Those two options are right up here. It says flip horizontal and flip vertical. So we can just see that. If we want to rotate, just go to a corner and you can rotate as you need. Another thing that I want to show you is that underneath the selection tool, we have the direct selection tool, which will choose the image inside of the box. And you can see that with this brown rule. From here, it has the same points that we would normally have, and you can zoom in. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you choose. I don't like this crop, it's fine. All right, let's just move a couple things around. I think that this is too close, so I'm just gonna move it ever so slightly down. For this, let's move it off of the edge um, using the second grid mark here, and this can close in here. It's probably too much text, so whoops. I'm just gonna delete some of this. And then again, we close a box with Command Option C and drag that down to the bottom. I'm gonna close this space just a little bit more, so I'm gonna open up this image and then let's just zoom in again. Great. I was reserving the right two columns here to create a sidebar for books. I just want to separate it by creating a rule on the right side of the image. You can do that by using the line tool. The shortcut for that is the backslash. So from the top of the margin, I'm going to hold, I'm going to click and hold shift and then drag all the way down. Currently the rule is blank, but we need to add a point size to it, which you can do up here. I'm gonna go with 0.25 to keep it subtle. You can also control this on the right side where it says stroke, which you'll see that it matches. You can't really see it right now because the color of the margin is hindering the black. We can do this by toggling with the letter W, which shows you a preview of the page. And now we can see the rule. I use W often to toggle back and forth between viewing the design with the grid and then viewing the preview. Let's go back to viewing our grid, so press W, and then we're going to add a subhead that says Books. For this subhead, I'm going to change the typeface to Rubik Light. The point size, let's go with 23. And then close that text box with Command Option C. I want to create some contrast between the subhead and the title. Let's do this by adding a shape. On the left side, it's right above the scissors that is a rectangle. And if you hold down, you can see that the options are a rectangle, ellipse, or a polygon. For this, we're going to use a rectangle. I'm going to draw one that gives a little bit of buffer just around the word box. Right now our box is blank. We can add some color to this on the right side under swatches. 
you'll see two boxes here. The first one is full, which is the fill color, and then the one in the back with the empty square in the middle is the stroke color. For the fill color, let's use yellow for now. You can see that the box is covering the text, and that's because InDesign works in layers, so to send this back, you can go under Object, Arrange, and then Send to Back. Let's zoom in here for a second. There's some corner options that we can play around with in InDesign. For this, I want there to be rounded corners, so under Object, oops, go to Corner Options, and then the drop down here will go to Rounded. There's some other ones you can play around with, but you know, it's your choice. And then preview will show you what it looks like. I think that's two rounds, so I'm gonna go down to 0.1. That's fine, sure. Let's align it so that it's perfectly centered. If you select both, you can just click and drag under window, object, and align. Pull out your alignment tool. We'll just dock that really quickly. You can align in the center here. You could do it horizontally. This is not centered though because what it's actually doing is centering this entire text box with the shape and the text doesn't actually fill that entire box. So I'm just gonna visually do it myself. I was just using the arrow keys there. Let's zoom back out. So if I grab books and move it right now, it's separate from the background. What I wanna do is group it together so that they become a unit. And you can do that by hitting Command G. Let's center this within the margins by holding Shift. And let's bring it straight to the top. We wanna make room underneath this for four books. Let's start with some body copy. And again, I don't have any, so let's fill with placeholder text. And then this will be Rubik. Let's do medium. And the point size here, I'm using eight over eight and a half. And let's add a little bit more text. Too much. Right, closing that. We can close the text box, Command Option C. And then since this is centered, I want this text to be center aligned. Under Paragraph, we can use this option. Let's add a book. Just gonna move this down really quickly. Let's go back to where our images are and drag one of the books onto here. And you're just gonna drag down and then to align, select both, go back to align and center. And let's do this this way. Let's group both of them. And if you hold option, you can drag this down and it'll duplicate it. So I'm gonna select both of them, hold option, and then duplicate them going down as well. This is a little bit too close, so I'm just gonna move it down slightly. The books aren't spaced out evenly right now, but we can do this pretty quickly by selecting all of them. And then in the alignment panel, there's a section called distribute spacing, and we want to do this vertically. Let's ungroup all of these. And then I want to show you another way to add images into your layout. Go back to your folder of links. And then for this, we can just drag the image into each of these boxes and it'll replace the image within there. I wanna maintain the height so that it's consistent throughout. I'm just going to use the direct select tool and then drag so that it fits and then command option C will open it to fit the image just as you would close a text box. Let's just do that for all of them. We're almost there. I just want to do a couple color changes to finalize this layout. For the books, let's ungroup that really quickly. And then for this yellow, I want to change it to a darker purple. 
we can do that by the changing the color on the bottom here, which is the same as your swatches color panel. I'm going to add it in the hex value here, which I am using 321 F3F, which you'll see, this is the color that you had previously, and this is the color that you changed it to. In here, you can also add your RGB value or a CMYK value. There is HSB in lab. I hardly use them, so maybe in a future video, we'll see. Just click OK, and you'll see that that changed. I wanna change the color of books. So we do that in the swatches panel, and instead of the shape, we wanna click the T, which stands for text. I'm gonna double click the T on the bottom left here to bring up the color picker again. And the color that I'm using is this neon yellow-ish, DBE120. I wanna change the drop cap of the L to match the purple. So in the text tool, let's select the L, and then using the eyedropper tool, which looks like an eyedropper, just eyedrop the purple. And then if you click off, it is actually purple, I can zoom in so you can see. To add another section for the yellow color, I'm just gonna create a rule to sit in the center of this first column. That's fine. I'm gonna make this seven points. And then in the stroke color, we'll double click. And then that color that I'm using is DBE120. And that's our finished layout. We should have done this much sooner in the process, but I didn't want to interrupt the flow of going through all the features. So we just want to make sure that we save our work. You can do that by hitting Command S and then naming your file in Design for Beginners. And lastly, to export your work, press Command E, which will bring up this dialog box. You can choose the format options here. Most often you'll use a PDF or a JPEG. For now, I'm just gonna choose a PDF. Click Save, and then here are some PDF options. If you're not familiar with all of them, just click High Quality Print for now, and then click Export. If you have multiple pages, you can certainly mess with the settings here to export what you need. Thanks so much for watching. These are the main features you're going to need to get started in Adobe InDesign. Don't worry if you didn't grasp everything, you can always use a video for reference. For now, just keep on creating. I'll see you in the next video.